Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On Mike, Mike, Mike King here. This is part of the Mike King Biz Media Network, ESPN, Richmond 106.1, every day from 5 to 7 a.m. We are also on International Business Good Radio, Saturdays, 10 a.m. in the East, as well as with uh, CW Richmond TV. That is Mike King Biz and Friends. We're taking our talents to TV. Every so often, hey, we talk to a lot of folks out there with a lot of topics, and so people are out there hurting. I know. How do I know people are hurting? Because I'm old and I'm hurting. Uh, I used to be a, you know, kind of like a stud mm. back in the day, but this is all that's left now. And so I used to jump out of planes back in those days. Shout out to all of the airborne folks in the military forces. Uh, and then I was playing football with my grandsons uh, about six months ago, maybe a year ago, and I fell. Okay. It took me longer to fall that day. Then when I fell out of the airplane and the whole time I'm like, this is not going to be good. Uh -huh. And it was every bit of what I thought it was. Mm. It hurt like whatever. So now what do I have? Ladies and gentlemen, I got the painkiller in the building. Doc, welcome to the program. Thank you. Appreciate it. Wellspring Chiropractic. That is the official. That's the government name. Right. Right. But you are the painkiller. The painkiller. All right. So tell it's a this elevator pitch. Tell folks you are and what you do. OK, so. Um, Muscle and joint pain is God, it's the biggest reason that people get out of work. Like they they call in sick because they're in pain, right? By the numbers, one in two Americans are in pain right now. Yeah. I, you know what? Yeah. I believe it. Everybody <laughs> talks It's not about, me. It's you. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so if, if there's two people yeah. and it ain't you. Yeah. It's you. <laughs> right. So what I do is I, I get people in and I see exactly why they're actually coming to me. Because, yeah, it hurt when you fell, right? But if it didn't stop you from doing anything, you'll just grunt through it. People are tough, right? right? But if it's stopping you from doing something you wanted to do, like the fun stuff, you know, you find out you're a little too weak for your weekend, right? Then, you know, I've never heard that one, Doc, before. Like you're a little too weak for your weekend. <laughs> because people live for the weekend. <laughs> yeah. And now all of a sudden yeah. you're too broke yeah. down. Right. I can't go hiking. I can't play golf. I can't play tennis because it hurts. Right. That's the goal. Not let's get you out of pain. Because again, you can you can be in pain, but if you're able to play tennis, you're able to hike, you're able to golf, who cares? Right. So okay. what I do is I get people out of pain most of the time in three visits, 88%. 88% of my patients, I get them out of pain in three visits. Okay. So you are a trained chiropractor. Yep. You went down the regular road like everybody else. Mm -hmm. And like we we've had a conversation. The chiropractor we paid for, you know, because we've been going to the chiropractor for the last 14 years, uh, you know, and he's working this mm -hmm. arm and then I, this one hurt and then the knee. When did you look at that model right there and mm -hmm. say, okay, I'm going to hang my shingle out because I want to do it different? I spent 10 years plus now as a doctor trying to figure out how to do exactly what I want to do. Uh, it's always kind of irritated me that, that, you know, chiropractic can help everything, but that's like saying medicine can help everything. But medicine, medical doctors, they they specialize. And what do they do? They become very, very good in what they specialize in. If you're a generalist, you can be pretty good at everything. I don't know that you can be great at anything. I want to be great at something. And to me, pain makes people very self-focused, right? Because they want to get out of pain. Okay. So... You know, they say that you can maintain 150 stable relationships, right? So like a stable relationship, they say is, you know, I see you in a bar. I don't feel embarrassed to come up and have a drink with you. Right. right. You can maintain 150 of those, right? Mm -hmm. Every person that I get out of pain, they're less selfish around all those 150 people. Does that make sense? So the biggest impact I think I can make is not trying to fix your scoliosis. It's not trying to change your curves. It's not trying to sell wellness to you, which honestly, like everybody has a different definition of what that is. So I don't know how I'm going to sell something that everybody can't even decide on what it is. Right. But everybody knows this hurts. I want to get out of pain. Right. Everybody knows that. Everybody that's knows. universal. Yeah. That's universal. And I'm good at it. So <laughs> let's focus on it. Right. When you were, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> the middle linebacker for the Oakland Raiders. Why the Raiders? Why the Raiders? Uh, well, actually, I had a friend who was cousins with Jay Schrader, who was the backup for Doug okay. Williams. Well, he's, they kind of went like went this. back and but forth. After Doug won the Super Bowl, right? They traded him to the Raiders. And the Raiders and your team. Them. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, Marcus Allen, Tim Brown. Yeah, I, I know. Everybody, Jackson. I, you know, people hate. 
a lot of people really don't hate the Raiders. I mean, they do, but Raiders are respected. I'm an Eagles fan, and uh, we we have our issues. We, yeah. we have our issues. But and it's painful being a Philadelphia sports fan. Mm. I'm just saying, sir, you're a painkiller. You need to. I don't know if you could help me because <laughs> this last year has been brutal. So you want to be the middle linebacker, mm -hmm. okay? When when you realize, like, I want to be a center fielder for the Phillies, uh, and I, that didn't materialize. Mm -hmm. So when did you realize, okay, let me go try it? What, what, was, what was the next thing? Well, I got injured um, playing football for Douglas Freeman, and uh, it wasn't football's fault. I was in a position I had never played before and did it wrong. Okay, what position um, did you play? I, I played some middle linebacker. I played some um, defensive tackle. Okay. Uh, just because I'm short, you know, you, you. stout. I, I was I, I was actually a lot smaller back then. You know, we, when we try and tell people back then. that, you know, and a lot of times people don't get it. Like my grandkids look at me like this old man that you see right now. Uh -huh. I used to be something, but this is <laughs> they're just like, like, yeah, okay. I was never great, right? So I don't know what made me think that I was going to be a pro. I I never actually was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. It was just like that was a dream. Well, that, that's know? that's called being like, young. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what happened when reality set in? Well, yeah, when I when I realized, you know, I'm probably not going to grow anymore. Um, I'm not nearly as fast as I need to be to play this position. <laughs> um, you know, I had to figure out something else. But, you know, I, because it was hard for me to stand up straight after I got hurt, uh, it took eight months. And I went to a chiropractor, but it was mostly physical therapies, not the traditional, like, let me pop you and stuff. Um so I was thinking, okay, let me be a physical therapist. So go to VCU, start as a biology major, shadowed a physical therapist, but I didn't know enough to know that physical therapy is like a thousand different things, not just one way to practice. Um, and he was doing like post-stroke rehab and broken hips for for elderly people. And you're like, that's cool. Yes. But that ain't football. Like. That ain't football for right. Right, the Raiders. right. So ended up uh, becoming a massage therapist because I was like, this has to be a better job than parking security. That's what I did for work study. Right. <laughs> well, sir, um, yes, I, I think that's yes. safe to say that, yeah, that, that is better. That is right. better. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, worked with the original renegades, not the imposters that came after the River Dogs. Um, and I uh, worked with the kickers for a season. Um, the renegades, and, that was the uh... the hockey team. OK. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They were like two levels below the NHL. So what did you do with them? I, I was a training assistant because okay. the owners wouldn't hire a massage therapist. Mm -hmm. But what did I do? I worked That's with the players did. that were hurt. Okay. Yeah. Good enough. So, again, dealing with people that have been in muscle and joint pain for over 20 years now. Right. While I was working with the kickers, I was also working at a chiropractic office. And they said, oh, we had this long conversation about what a great chiropractor you'd be. And I kind of blew it off because I was like, eh, they just think I'm a nice guy. But it was like six months later. I'm like, I really want to do this. So, I started looking at the different schools. And the one in Atlanta had dorms. So, I was like, hey. At least I won't be homeless. <laughs> headed down there. And, and um, since then, I've been trying to figure out how to integrate chiropractic with my massage background, with my my just my understanding of the body as a whole, trying to look at people as people rather than, you know, looking at this MRI and just like, OK, I have to fix what I see here. But it's more like there's a person in front of me and the MRI is not the whole picture of who you are and what's putting you in pain. Does that make sense? No, that so, so you're treating the person the whole you're going with the holistic yeah. approach. Yeah. Yeah. And it's more there's there's a specific goal. You want to get back on the tennis court. Okay. Let's get you there. These are the steps from where you are to being on the tennis court. Let's get you there. And this is how long I think it's going to take. Let's do that. All righty. Very quickly, how can people find information out about uh your organization? Painfreerva.com. From a business standpoint, that that's pretty cool. Pain, pain, pain free. How'd you come up with that name? Well, clearly, if you're well, that's my goal killer. was to make Richmond pain free. <laughs> so, you know, I figured that was the best URL, and it was available. So, you got it, got it. Okay, so when you you work for someone else, mm -hmm. when you're there, and a lot of times people always begrudge working for somebody, mm -hmm. and they got a beef with that. What you learn from the organization you came from and when did you know it was time for you to hang out your shingle for yourself when did i know it was time well <laughs> during uh 2020 i had a couple big companies that i worked for um decide that you know it was a good business move to uh well one of them had to cut the doctor with the least seniority and that was me that was you um, and then the other one decided it was a good idea to try to 
change the terms of my contract without my permission. So, and so you're like, okay, it's yeah, time it's for like, me. Yeah, okay, to... time to start my own. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. from the time you thought about starting your own to you got started and you're like, I can do this thing. Mm -hmm. How long did that take? Let me back up a little bit. I, like I said, I've been trying since I became a doctor to figure out the, the best way for me to practice. How do I want to specialize? And I had a call from a friend of mine from school who lived in Texas and worked for this company and said, you've got to check them out. You will love them. And what happened was I ended up getting a job for them. That was the first company. It's just in a cost cutting move. I have nothing negative to say about them because um, I had seven letters of recommendation from them within a week after they let me go. Uh, but what they did was they really polished me and really trained me. There's a there's a really good process that they have. I've added a couple things to it to you know broaden it and I think get a little bit better results. Um, but it was it was really when I got you know the, when when the contract thing happened, I said okay I can do this. When that company let me go, I wasn't ready because I didn't have the process down um as far as all the paperwork and things like that i wasn't ready to start the business cuz i wasn't expecting it i was going to stay with the company uh, cuz they had treated my wife and i so well um so when they let me go i wasn't ready got the other job when they decided to change my contract without my permission you were ready that was you was know like, what time okay, you know what time it was time to go okay yeah, time to and go. so then you hang out your shingle when you know you had something there um well I, before i hung out the shingle you I knew did. yeah you knew you had something yeah, I knew. it's just a matter of time yeah because you're saying I had results, I had experience. What I don't have is people that know who I am and can get out of pain. And now I have people that have gotten out of pain. But every two weeks, I have to turn over my patient population because people are done. They're out of pain and they're gone. So you constantly have to keep mm -hmm. new business coming in because you're saying 50% of people are in pain. Yeah. And what are you saying if it ain't? Yeah. <laughs> if it's not broken, completely torn or dislocated, I can help. Just tell me where it hurts. And you're saying because if it ain't you, <laughs> you the one. In yeah, 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 yeah. If it's if it's not me in pain, it's you, right? <laughs> so, and it's all kind. Of, all right. So, what ages do you treat? Uh, well, because my treatment is not really comfortable, I like them to be at least twelve years old. Um, uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, we got to back up. Okay. When you just said mm -hmm. your your treatment is not comfortable, yeah. Uh, 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 let's talk about that. What okay. do you mean? Okay, so. When you because have, you know for a yeah. person who's kind of squirrely yeah, yeah, yeah. and squeamish, uh -huh. when you didn't drop that on me, and now all of a sudden <laughs> you were a nice guy before. Now all of a sudden I'm like, yo, man, I don't know about this dude. This dude, great. Right, tell me it hurt. Uh -huh. I'm hurting already, and you're yeah. ready to say because you know what? Yeah, but because you and your brethren and sister and out mm -hmm. there, we start thinking about that pop. Yeah, and yeah, that pop yeah. is a scary sound. Right. Now you're telling me it's gonna hurt. So right. the floor right. is yours, man. Come on, well, you I'll tell you the the pop is probably the least um, the the smallest part of what I do, right? Um, the pop is is really it's there's a fluid filled sac around all your joints, and it's a quick change can cause a bubble to form, and that's what that sound is. Um, so, but that moving the bones is more of a long game. Right. It sets you up to be in a better position to have, you know, greater health throughout the rest of your life. Like that's that's what chiropractic is about is trying to make the holes that your nerves travel through the right size so that they can function the best. What I do is I go after the tissues that hurt. So if stuff is out of place because you fell or because you have bad posture and, you know, it creeps up on you and now it hurts. It's not the bone being out of place that causes the pain. It's the soft tissue, the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons around it that are tightening up, right? So what happens if I go to try to push you, right? Everything on this side clamps down to try to keep me from knocking you off the chair, right? Mm -hmm. So if you got something that hurts a lot, it clamps up a lot, right? And that clamping up makes it hurt. Does that make sense? You get you can't get the trash out, right? Everything that eats poops, right? And so all of the cells in your body and the muscles and all that stuff that that make energy, they have waste products, right? If they can't get out, that's going to start to bind up. You're going to get inflamed. It's going to start to hurt. So if I press on it, it's like a bruise. I press on a bruise and it hurts, right? Think about a tendon that has tendonitis. It's already swollen. It's already irritated. It's already causing pain. So I press on it. It's not going to feel good. Okay. Right. But, you can see the look on my face. Yes, right now. I can. You can see a look of concern. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But you're going to feel better afterwards. Does that make sense? Yes. It is um, 
so you can you can poke a bear and run away and it's it's gonna be pissed off at you right, right? but if you hold it there and that pain starts to go away then the bear relaxes and you can let it go and the bear's not coming after you okay so what's happening is I'm finding the places where your body hurts the worst and loosening them up so that everything can loosen up. And then I get you strong afterwards. So most of what I do is called manual therapy. Um, and if I think that you need an adjustment, I'll do that. Um, and that's where the pop will come in. Uh, but most of the time, it's more like a hard massage. And then exercises afterwards yeah. to make you strong. Because I'm not trying to make you feel nothing. I'm trying to make you able to handle whatever life throws at you. Because a lot of times people think, they think that whole sexy kind of, yeah, I'm going over here. And yeah, yeah, they're a type of massage. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that kind of party. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, this party might involve a little bit of hurt. A little bit of hurt. A little, a little bit of hurt. But, but it's going to get you yeah. better. When you explain it to... So I, I've been around doctors a lot. And, you know, you had the doctors who had the bedside. Then you had the ones mm -hmm. who kind of bring it the real talk. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people go into the chiropractor and, and they gave them the sanitized real talk. And then you come in and talk. Like, yeah, ever... this is going to hurt. <laughs> this is going to hurt. But I tell you that beforehand. I'm like, okay, this is going to hurt. If we're in certain areas, it's probably going to bruise. So I'll let you know. Probably going to bruise, Right. Um, it should be like, if you're sore, it'd be a day, day and a half, right? After that, what is, what is 10 minutes of hell? If you're going to be able to, That's to, to do what you want to do going forward. All right. So doc, you're working with people and all of a sudden you realize you see that it worked and mm -hmm. you see it coming on in them. Talk about what that's like. <laughs> to see it work. Yeah. I really enjoy it. I used to like be surprised, like, man, that really worked. I'm glad that worked. At what but, point did you get past the, the, the surprise that you had magic hands? Okay. That all of a sudden you're like, okay, you expect it now because you know I've done this enough times and I know what the end result is going to be. Well, I'll tell you the first time where I where I went over the edge, right? Um, there was a 14-year-old girl. She had been playing kickball in gym class. Somebody tried to slide into the base she was standing on and hit her instead of the bag. Big time swollen ankle, right? It was so bad. They actually wrapped her ankle in, in caution tape. Right? I, I can show you the picture because they, they didn't have this, any this ace bandage or anything like that. So they put some ice on it and wrapped it in caution tape and set it to ortho on call to make sure it's not broken, right? So they go, ortho on call tells them, you know, you're going to be in the in the boot and on, on these crutches for minimum two weeks. Uh, her father's a friend of mine, sent me a text, sent me the picture. I'm like, man, bring her in tomorrow, right? So- she comes in. I sit down with this 14 year old girl. I'm like, look, you are not going to like me during this. Okay. This is really swollen. This is going to hurt. And she said, okay. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is going to hurt. And I was like, I'm not going to judge what you say to me during this. Right. And I looked at her parents and I was like, and y'all not going to judge what she says during this. <laughs> okay. She's going yeah. She yeah. to bring the heat. So yeah, she was, she was weeping. She didn't, she didn't verbalize much, but, but you, was, could read her mind. you knew what weeping. time it was. Yeah. She was weeping. Mom came over and like straddled the table and was like holding her while I was treating her. But she was walking that day. Like literally she got up off the table and I had to convince her. I'm like, you can put more pressure on it. Try it. Because she was Try used it. to the last yeah. time. And was... We're all used to this. Like, you know, you get a sprained ankle. You're not going to be able to walk for a couple of weeks. Right. That's that's just the thought process. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody has been telling her. She's like, you're saying I can walk right now. I'm like, yeah, walk right now. So it took a while because it was like two, three steps. OK, put some more weight on it. OK, put some more weight on it. Put some more weight on it. By that Monday, she goes back to gym class and they won't let her participate. And she's like, but I'm fine. And she starts running around in a circle and they're like, stop, because they couldn't believe it. You know, but for me, I've seen results like that so rapidly, so consistently that it doesn't even move me anymore. People will say all kinds of stuff to me when they're in pain. I can imagine. Yeah. Say all kinds of stuff. So the painkiller. There mm -hmm. you go. All right. Wellspring Chiropractic. Mm -hmm. How can people find you once again? Painfreerva.com. All righty. So uh, as I always say, this is on the mic with Mike. We are uh, RVA's business talk leader. We're here talking to business owners. So you didn't roll solo. When you came solo. before, I didn't know the talent you brought with you. Oh, man. No. Okay. I outkicked my coverage. 
Well, you know, with, with the luckiest <laughs> ones of us, we do that. Like you said, guys, you wanted to be, I wanted to be a center fielder for the Phillies. You wanted to be a backer for the Raiders. Mm -hmm. I did pretty good. Yeah. You did pretty good. Yeah. All righty. So introduce your, your wife, and then we're going to talk yeah. to her. And the lovely, the talented Tiffany Ann Capri. All righty. Uh, all right. One of my, Mike, we'll be back with Mrs. Capri in just a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to On Mike with Mike, the premier business radio program. I'm your host, Mike King. All righty, so uh, we took a break. We had the the, the painkiller was here with us. And, you know, you talked about popping and, you know, locking and pressing on things. <laughs> In the end, you will feel better. But I was kind of disturbed when he said, uh, mm, it's going to hurt. When a person leads off with it's going to hurt. <laughs> oh, they're being truthful. All righty, so he brings the missus in, and they were here before, and I really didn't know who you are. And one of the great parts about social media, you're clicking through, and I saw the magic that you do. So really quickly, tell folks who you are and what you do. So I'm Tiffany Capri, and um, I am, by trade, I'm a nutritionist, but I am a sweet lover. Like, I love you. Second name? How are you a, a nutritionist <laughs> telling us <laughs> to do all of that, no, no, no. And now you're making things that look like they do. How do you do that? So, uh, so by trade, uh, I, I'm from the Philippines. So in, in the Philippines, I'm, I'm a registered nutritionist and dietitian. I'm still working on to having my um, registration here in the okay. U.S. transfer. So, so I'm not practicing right now, but I am a dessert maker. So I love, I love food. And um, one of my favorite stuff to do is desserts or desserts. So one of my favorites is French macarons. And back in the Philippines where I'm from, it's really hot and humid. Yes, it is. And my kitchen is not air conditioned and it's really small. So I cannot really make French macarons at home. I can only make it at work where I, um, um, where uh, I, at work I have like kitchen and okay. I have like refri refrigeration and good uh, ventilation and stuff like that. I can make it at work, but not really at home. And so, coming here, I see fresh macarons and I'm not really very happy with them because they're usually um, in packaging that are like, has to be um, shelf stable for a certain period of time. So if you look at the label, like for example, I just want a hazelnut flavor. I look at the label, there's tons of stuff. And yeah, like, it's, I, you know, it's the, a lot of stuff in there or big words yes. with a whole bunch of hyphens in there. And then the hazelnut will be at the last. So that <laughs> means there's like teeny tiny hazelnut in there. Like where did the hazelnut go? So for me, I'm like, I'm big on flavor. And um, with my desserts, I want like, not just like big flavors, like, like put everything in there, like flavorings or whatnot. I like the real thing. So that's why what I'm really proud of with our French macarons is like, you want lemons, you got lemons. That's the first thing you're going to see in the ingredient list. Lemons, and um, it's we are naturally flavored, and we're working on the natural uh, food coloring as well, because macarons are known for their very pastely and nice, um, nice and color, yes. So um, you cannot really get rid of that food coloring in there, but we are working on like, um, like, um, unnatural stuff and everything we use is organic so okay ma'am uh so it's it's a pastry so mm -hmm. what's your skills cooking other stuff where were you okay when when you were a kid you always like to cook i do i, I always, you always like to yeah, cook i watch my parents of my mom cook okay all right so let's yeah. let's go back to mom what was what was your thing that mom made that was like that was it oh she's She's known for her. That we have this dish in the Philippines. It's called, um, well, in in her region, um, it's very popular. It's called molo soup. Okay. It's kind of like dumplings, but you really have dumplings in there, like um, um, pork and with pork and meat and stuff like that. And then we shredded chicken, and then it's it's a soup, and it's very 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 tasty. And that's what she's very known for. She's known for that one. Yes. So when people would come over, they want her to bust out that to yes. make that. Okay. Oh. Yes. Uh, do, do you know how to make that? I not do. Make, not, like not, 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 not like, like mom. Not like yes. mom. Okay. So when did you know you were pretty good around the kitchen? Um, I think when I was in high school, like in home ec. You knew you were good? Yeah. I'm like, okay. I, I, they don't say like, oh, 
Dave, you, you made this? It's really good. Like, yeah, I did that. Like, oh, pretty good. Okay. <laughs> then just, that, that's just, everything you're good at. <laughs> when did you go off to the dessert thing? Like, how did that happen? I've always, I've always been a sweet tooth. So I've always had that sweet tooth. And um, I always like go for it. So if, if, in a buffet, I'd always look for like, where's the dessert station? Oh, right there. Okay. And I like look at the desserts and like, what do they have? And um, I like the colors and I also like the different flavors. And if it's just sweet, everything sweet and no flavors, I'm like, okay, I'm 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 done. I'll, I'll go back to whatever whichever place in the in the buffet station or whatnot. Okay, so when you come to America, what is how what do you think of the America sweet game? What is it good? Is oh, it strong? It's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to him, I was like, hey, like this is just very sweet. <laughs> straight up sugar. Yeah, straight up sugar. Just and pouring then, sugar in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the label. Well, I've been yeah, using oh, you're, always, you're, okay, you're yeah, the label. Okay, you look at the label. So, like, sugar. That's the very first thing that you always see. And, like, a bunch of stuff. And then a little bit of that, like, flavor or whatnot that they're actually hyping on in the front of the label. So, that's... That's yeah, it. Like, yeah. When I came down here, you know, when they don't joke when they say sweet tea, they don't. <laughs> I mean, yo, why don't you just open your mouth and pour sugar in it? Because <laughs> they do not joke. And, you know, I've been you accused of from McDonald's. Huh? Yeah, you know, I'm accused, you know, I like sweet, I like tea with some stuff and some sugar, but it's just over the top. But it's funny, though, because I like the sweet teas here because it's freshly brewed tea with sugar. Back home, our iced tea is like iced tea, sugar, and then flavor of tea. Oh, really? So, yeah, so I'm here like, I love ice the sweet tea here. So when they the first order, like um, I'd like to have iced tea, and then they're like, um, sweet or unsweet. Like, oh, there's an option. It can have that option, sweet or unsweet. And then I got the tea. It's like this is actually freshly brewed tea. It's not like just sugar with a little bit of tea flavoring there. So when you're here and you start making your desserts, mm -hmm. and you and you gave them to people, what happened when when people tried and when and you saw that look mm -hmm. on their face? Uh, well, that's I think the mo the very satisfying part when you're cooking, when you're a sh you're a chef, or when you cook, is like when you see the plate your your guest's plate empty, like, like you know what time it's it was. Like yeah, and then also, um, the desserts like their reaction when they take in the dessert and like telling you like oh this is not too sweet or like they they could have more because they know that you made it good or you made it well for them. One of the things here is that. So as a nutritionist, you are always looking at the labels, I would guess. Yes. And you know what you're looking at. The average person doesn't look at the labels because it scares us. Because we don't know what all them big words are and big words. And they got a whole bunch of hyphens and, and all of those things right there. Numbers. Exactly. We don't know what that thing is. Explain to give our listeners an idea of some things that they should look for as a nutritionist and you know the kind of things you should stay away from so it's all like we stay away from anything that is high sugar high in fat high sugar anything that's high in, when um, you see the word high that, that, yeah, that's yes. not good <laughs> no that's not good and i would always go for i'd always go for the ingredient list um especially for me I, i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a baker i'm a chef so i would like look at what do they have in the ingredient list, the first thing that you see, the first thing that you see, the first food item or whatever item you see there is that's that means the food has the most of it. Oh, really? And then the last thing that you would see at the end of the list is has the least amount of it. So when you saw the thing you liked and it was at the end. At the end, I'm like, okay, let's put this back. <laughs> then let's look for something else that has what hmm. we want. Okay, so from the business side, so you're working through the business stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, when do you know, okay, let me go ahead and 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 start my own business with this. Because a lot of people think that they can make, like everybody thinks, a lot of people think they can sing too. And everybody, you know, we, we can't. Everybody thinks that they can bake because they were, you know, over to church. They told them, you know, okay, you're good. You know, that lemon meringue pie, you know, that's it. But it takes more than that. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about you starting a business and telling people if you have a dream, to how you go about making it happen? I think it's just, it needs a lot of work. That's when I realized like, okay, if you have a dream, it's it's not, 
it's just a dream if you don't have plans be uh, before you do that. And then also, it takes a lot of hard work, and especially if you want to be, um, you want to do it legally, and you want to do it like make sure that you're doing the right thing as per the, go the government or the state or the county. You have to follow certain regulations, and you have to go by that, especially for food. Um, I could not risk like just selling out there, like not having certain certification, like the food safety. I have to, I have to back myself up with. Um, I know that's right, or I know that's clean because I did this process and things like that. So it takes a lot of work um, to get to that place. I think there's a lot of people would be cutting corners, like just cooking out of, of their house and, and selling all those things. Yeah. Alrighty, so uh, the what is it about? What are they called? Macaroons? Macaroons? Macarons. Macarons. Hmm. So they're Why macaroons they so and macarons. Okay, well, see, that's why I have kind of friend. What's the difference? <laughs> so macaroons is a pastry with um, more of um, coconut in there, in there, desiccated coconut. And it's kind of like a cookie too, but it's round shape. Okay, and that's and a what? A macaroon? That's a macaroon. That's yeah. a macaroon. Okay. And then a macaron, a French macaron. There's like different, like there's French, there's Italian, there's Swiss, but there's like, it's macarons. It's a sandwich kind of um, oh, really? cookie. With filling, so the filling would have different flavors in them. And so that's what you settled on are those macarons. The French macarons. The fr yes. French French macarons. I'm, see, I'm from Philly. We're not that cultured. To be, you know. <laughs> are they spelled different? Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they are. Yeah, they are spelled different. Okay, yes. good. Because yes. that that'd be confusing. How did you settle on that being the thing? Um, I think it's. I, I I love challenge, and then I think because it took a it took long for me to like actually perfect the perfect the um my recipe, and it it has a lot to do with humidity with the temperature. Like we had to buy like a um the humidifier at one point because it was summer and it was like so humid and I cannot like have everything rise the nice way, and it has to look a certain way and um. So it has a lot of science to it that I really like, like food science is a, something that I geek about. So I feel like that's something that is um, not always served right, if I may say. Like it's always like something that you can get from the store, but it's already um, um, prepackaged from from a manufacturing company and things like that, and um, not really like just freshly made, ha homemade um, French macarons. How long would it take you to make one? Um, a batch, I, it probably would take me um, like a couple of hours. A couple of hours, okay. Of All right, so when you're, like, how does this thing work? So you make it and you try it. Nah, it sounds a little off. And how do you keep going back, like, going back again and again and again? Because you, once you make it, you can't doctor it up. Like, if I make some food. Mm -hmm. Maybe once it's done, I can okay. Well, this needs a little this. Yeah, there's this. a lot of happy accidents. In yeah, you know this or this. But how do you do your thing when can you taste it before um, and know it, you're on to something? Usually, when I do, like I have recipes and then I have like percentages of like what I want. Like, okay, let's try this this sweetness or like this flavor with this amount of that, and then I I make that batch and then test it. If I don't like it. Okay, let's go back to the the board and then like edit some like percentages and some grams of certain stuff and then do it again. So it's like a laboratory. That's actually. food science. That's when people talk about food science. Yes. It's not a dinch, a pinch of this and a dash of that. Yes. No, we ain't doing that. Because you're not gonna have the same like standard thing. Alrighty, how can people find you and follow you out there? Uh, you can follow me at um, on Instagram. It's at Kachina Capri. It's C. Uh, C U C I N A C A P R I, and um, that's where we're at right now. Um, and we can you can email us at Kachina Capri at gmail dot com. What's Kachina Capri? So Capri is our last name. Okay. And Kachina is um it's a uh, Italian for for um kitchen, and um I've been trained in in Italy, so I was like I like I like. Wait, wait a second. The, you're, you're, so that's that's your training Italian. I'm from Philly, so we know we yeah. we know some Italian. Yeah. Not really. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like Italian food. That's that is about yeah, it. I can, you know, I can cook some meat spaghetti. All right, so wait, so you brought a bag in here. Yes. Are we gonna show? We're we gonna show it. It's actually 
he always orders from me whenever he has to um impress people patients oh, like, ever, look at ever, that. Ever, like they graduated from his treatment and so we have a little thank you for you from Wellspring Chiropractic and it's made from Pachina Capri. And oh, so that's what you, so when I saw this, I didn't know what they were, so they, they are, okay, wait a second, ladies and gentlemen. So they they are like little little sandwiches. Yeah, little sandwiches. And um, they're made of almond flour and um, the rest are like ganache, like chocolate. So we have two flavors in there. You have the orange chocolate and then you have the lemon curd. Okay, so what are the bun? They look like buns, mm -hmm. but they're not. They're not. Yeah. Okay. What what are what's the outside? The outside is the shell is um made of um almond flour and sugar and okay. um, um egg whites. It's kind of like meringue and okay. egg, almond flour, and then the insides you have um it could be, uh, we have a lot. We have tons of um 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 flavors that we can offer. And right now you have the chocolate ganache. Um, which is orange chocolate ganache. So there's really real uh, real oranges in there. You can bite through it and then you can feel the rinds. Mm. In there. Yes. And then you have the lemon curd, which is also made of real lemon. So in the center, you can like, there's like a burst of lemon curd um, when you bite it. So in. there are multiple flavors here. So you had to make multiple batches mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you need to go ahead and check this. Uh, that may, oh, that's nice too. I got the, thank you. Got the, the QR code thing going on there. And you have the leopard. Oh. Yes, it's a label. Macaroons. And the other things macarons. are called. That's macarons. And the other one is macaroons. Okay, so, so what do I have? Coconut has like the. the you know, is macaroons. Coconut. Yeah. Oh, oh. Did she taught you that? He, he, he explains it better than I do. Oh. Yeah, so. <laughs> orange chocolate These are macarons macarons mm -hmm. macaroons are two o's yes yeah. yes so you're a co -co 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 you're a cultured man <laughs> 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 that doc is cultured right there boy let me tell you something well all right we'd like to thank you guys for coming on the program That's excellent right, right here uh the packaging is great congratulations one last time how can people find you uh, oh, um, on Instagram. Yes. So Kuchi, at Cucina Capri, it's C U C I N A C A P R I, or you can email us at Cucina Capri at gmail dot com. You can also get to her site from drcapri.com. dot com. Oh yeah, and it's Cucina Capri at the uh, www Cucina Capri dot com. And you yes. the pain, uh, the the painkiller. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we do. We talk to the best and the brightest out there. Folks are doing some amazing work. So go ahead and support them. One of my Mike, we'll talk to you soon.